That used to be the grocer's. The butcher and the charcuterie are closed, but the baker still works. We have 20,000 square meters of garden with two gardeners. I always say the kitchen should be near the garden, because when you pick a salad or pull a leek in the morning, it has a completely different taste from anything you buy in the market. I was in 75 years ago. I was born there, behind that window at the top there. The window next to the chicken up there. I still sleep in that room. While Paul had a chat with his old friend Colette Sevilla, I went to see what was going on in the kitchen. I've never been in the kitchen of a really top-rated restaurant before. The very first thing that struck me was the cleanliness. Everything was spick and span. And yes, that big metal B does stand for Bocuse, never one to retire from publicity. I think that cooking is a thing that calms. A good meal amongst friends is convivial, and I believe that's what's important. For that reason, you've given Lyon something quite extraordinary. Lyon has done a lot for me as well. That's true, but you seem to have discovered a secret. I believe that after the war it was a very good period for me because at the beginning the people were hungry. Now people aren't hungry. After four or five years of privation they were hungry. Now they are blasé about everything. Chefs Bouverel and Muller have a last minute conference before the evening rush starts. Tonight there are 148 people to feed, some of the most luxurious food in France. Chef Bouverel has the much prized blue, white and red insignia on his collar of one of the best workers of France. I admired his onion chopping technique. That's my job, he said. It almost goes by itself. Table 3 is the ambassadress of Thailand. Monsieur Paul, as he's known in the kitchen, watches eagle-eyed for the slightest sign of slackness or dirt as his team of 19 sous chefs go about their business. David Gilliman, who has the wonderful title of sous chef of the demi party, don't ask me what that means, is one of the few allowed to slice up the fabulously expensive black truffles to stuff a chicken.
I have to say I had some doubt about the morality of eating a $50 bowl of soup flavoured with truffles, but after a few minutes in the kitchen it was easy to see where the money went. Showman to his fingertips appeared not to miss an opportunity to welcome his guests. He told me later that he did this to slow down the big groups from all arriving in the dining room at once, so the waiters had time to seat the diners. I don't think I'll ever again be able to listen to the triumphal march from Aida without thinking of Paul Bocuse doing his magnificent number. Paul left me to look after some wine cellars in California with some white wine and a portion of Sol Fernand Point, Paul's old mentor. Heaven was not far off. Francois Pipala poured me a glass of Saint Julien 1978, which he described as a little Jesus in velvet pants. 